Look, we've uh, heard him called Airbus Albo because, well, he <laughs> loves his VIP 737 jet and an even larger one for those overseas trips. Yet, you know, it's a really neat jet. It's got its own bathroom, shower and all this sort of stuff. The seats that he sits in in his private suite, well, they can fold down to form a double bed. It's, well, look, he's the Prime Minister. But now Airbus Albo has a new moniker. It's Airbrush Albo because he wants to rewrite or erase the narrative regarding his time as Prime Minister. Uh, the voice was a perfect example of a bloke, a Prime Minister, comfortable in the VIP class travel but out of touch with the voters. And, well, many tried to change his mind leading up to the voice referendum failure, but he wouldn't listen. Now he wants to airbrush history to take out his role in the failure of his referendum, which cost taxpayers and, frankly, shareholders of so many big corporates hundreds of millions of dollars. Joining me to discuss this and more from Hobart is Tasmanian Liberal Senator Jonathan Dunningham. And it's great to see you, Jono. Uh, and happy Christmas, happy Boxing Day. I mean, what do you make of this airbrush elbow, bloke? I mean, fair income. Amazing. I mean... It is amazing, absolutely. I mean, thinking he's going to sort of end 2023 by telling people he bore no responsibility for the things that he inflicted <laughs> on them. Australians didn't choose to have this referendum. Australians didn't choose to go down the pathway that he inflicted on them. They were the first words out of his mouth at the lectern on election night when he won uh, to talk about honouring yeah. the Uluru statement from the heart uh, in full. Now... Australians wanted him to deal with the things like cost of living, bringing down power prices, making housing more affordable, making sure people could get and keep a job. All of these other things were his doing. And for him to now, it failed, stand up and say, well, this is not my loss, this is not something I bear responsibility for, I think he's just frankly outrageous. And it is similar to what we see in Parliament. A lot of Australians would miss this. But when they talk about, oh, well, you know, these interest rate rises, they're not our problem. The cost of power, well, that's the Ukraine war. And, and the blame game goes on. For him to walk away from this is just more of the same. And it's what we expect from a Labor Prime Minister who doesn't take the job seriously. Look, I, I was broadcasting on, on radio in Brisbane today and I made the point about all of this. I said, it's like Mr Nobody's come back into vote. Remember, kids used to say, oh, I didn't do it. It was Mr Nobody. Nobody did it. Uh, this is where the Prime Minister of Australia now is. Jonathan, this is a, a, a genuine lack of leadership. He won't pull Chris Bowen into line and, and now he's hiding uh, the reality that he served up to all of us. Anyway, let's talk about Western Australia. It seems there's a fair bit of airbrushing going on there as the Environmental Defenders Office provides comments which seem as murky as a billabong in the desert regarding involvement in with climate activists. So what do you make of that? Well, honestly, there are many more shameful acts for a government to perpetrate than giving taxpayers money. This finite resource that we have to pay for hospitals and schools and roads and all the other essential services we need... But this Labor government is putting it into the Environmental Defender's Office. $8.3 million they've funded the EDO to go and uh, back in legal cases, green lawfare to stop mining developments, other resources developments to ensure uh, that these projects don't go ahead. What kind of a government that sits over the and presides over the assessment process and approvals process then by the same uh, bucket of money goes and funds an organisation to challenge these approvals in court? And not only are they challenging the approvals for projects, they're now, as it appears, because they haven't been able to give us any clarity on this, supporting activists who are allegedly perpetrating wrongs in civil law by trespass and the like. So I'm very concerned about what I read when the EDO are not just going out and protecting the environment, as they say they do, but also going out and doing things yeah. that are not in line with these environmental uh, uh, protection causes they seem to stand by elsewhere. Yeah. And for those playing at home, you've heard me say this before, 4,950 pieces of paper Gina Reinhart had to fill in to open up the massive Roy Hill iron ore mine. I mean, fair dinkum. Government bureaucracy is just mad in this country. Now, Senator, this one is for you. I'm, in fact, wearing a jacket in empathy with the great salmon industry of Tasmania. Very sorry, very close to you. Uh, the threat to pause some salmon farming in Tasmania is becoming a threat to some of your rural communities. Yeah, well, and Gary, I might just say I quite like your jacket, for what it's worth. Uh, 
Thank yes, it, again, decent. the environmental, <laughs> environmental Defenders Office uh, at the heart of this, again, as well. The Environmental Defenders Office, alongside yeah. the Bob Brown Foundation and the Australia Institute, all left-wing, left-leaning organisations that are, in one case, the EDO, taxpayer-funded, have sought to appeal the permits that have been in place for more than 15 years for the salmon industry to operate in Macquarie Harbour, which, for those who don't know, is West Coast Tasmania, the town of Strawn. There are 500 jobs or thereabouts yes. linked to that industry in this community. And uh, Tanya Plibersek has, because the law, she says, dictates she must do this, opened up reconsideration of these permits. Now, she wouldn't have to do this if the EDO, taxpayer-funded EDO, hadn't gone and launched this campaign against it. This industry is sustainable, but it is a further example of green lawfare. Uh, activists from downtown Sydney and Melbourne who are going to do whatever it takes to win a battle against sustainable industries because they don't care about jobs in regional Australia. And it might start with the 500 jobs on the west coast of Tasmania, which will rip the guts out of Strawn and the west coast, the football club, the school, all of the community organisations. It'll go, like many of the, uh, of the other towns on the West Coast, but it will end at the 5,000 jobs in Tasmania in the billion-dollar industry we have. That's where they're going, and this is why this government needs to actually stand up for workers rather than downtown inner-city elites who they're trying to win the votes of back from the Greens. Well, I think you're spot on. I mean, Senator Dunningham, the, the simple reality is Tanya Plibersek is staring at the likely defeat in her seat of Sydney. The Greens are going to get her at the next federal election. She's making dumb decisions all over the country. Environmental flows through the Darling River, heavens above, that's a river that needs to dry out every so often. You're changing the ecology of the river if you want to put lots of water into it all the time. Then they're doing this to the salmon industry, the craziness of lopping off the tops of hills in far north Queensland to put up wind turbines. Uh, this, this, this this woman really is is playing to the green vote she's worried about. Well, it, absolutely, Gary. And you know what's worse? Uh, in 2024, this government is going to set about changing the environmental approval laws at a federal level uh, that have been in place for 20 years. Now, they've needed updating for some time. That's something we embarked upon. But here we are staring down the barrel of a very left-leaning environment minister who is, as you said, uh, having the Greens snap at her heels in her electorate. And that means we are going to be seeing laws that will appease the Greens. That cannot be good for our economy. That cannot be good for jobs. And above all else, it probably won't be good for the environment because when you lock it up and throw away the key, we know the outcome is far worse than managing the environment in line with best practice and world-leading science, which is what many of our productive primary and extractive industries do. But this is what 2024 is going to hold. And, Gary, I fear for those who work in the mining sector, those who work in fisheries and forestry, and particularly on the land in farming, it's going to be a grim year if Tanya Plibersek teams up with the Greens and David Pocock and others again because they'll be shutting down an industry in every community, and that is bad for our economy and our country. Yeah, the productive elements of society are not needed. Uh, what did the Greens once say... Um... You don't need farmers, you just go to Woolworths and Coles. I mean, spare me. Heavens above, I don't know how you put up with that malarkey that goes on day in, day out in the Australian Senate. At Christmas, how's Christmas been for you in Tasmania? Have we lost a bit of that Christmas buzz we used to have? Because I feel like a few people are sort of putting it back into their pocket and saying, don't want to offend anybody. Well, I think that is sadly the case. I mean, we're seeing people who would uh, once upon a time have adorned their stores and... Uh, public buildings with uh, messages of what the season's yeah. all about, and that is the birth of Christ. And uh, we are a Judeo-Christian nation. That's the foundation of what we yeah. as a country are built upon. But uh, uh, here in Tasmania, we've got a an Equal Opportunity Commission, which, of course, will come after you uh, with the full force of the law if you happen to offend anyone by expressing certain views. And yeah. so uh, a lot of businesses and uh, community leaders have decided to, as you say, put it in their pocket. Uh, and uh, as a result, have gone on uh, to just wish people season's greetings. But I wholeheartedly say Merry Christmas and may it be a blessed one to all of your viewers and uh, particularly here in Tasmania where oh, we need it. Good on you, Liberal Senator for Tasmania, Jonathan Dunningham. <laughs> you know, I've been saying for years to Paul Murray, uh, I said the biggest growth industry in Australia were those who wanted to be offended on behalf of others. Thanks so much for your time.